morning, Tracy. Good morning, morning yeah. world. Uh, we're back for another Books at Lunchtime, and we are super delighted today to have Sophie Neville join us. Good morning, Sophie. Good morning, Good morning. Sophie. <laughs> Hello. Now, I'm a little bit giddy this morning um, because Sophie um, may not be known to anybody who is not a particular fan of this which is Swallows and Amazons. Now I should say this isn't Arthur Ransom himself. I have an old edition here which is super super well loved um, but Sophie is now the president of the um, Arthur Ransom Society. That's right isn't it? And well, I was for five years. Actually, I've handed over to Libby Purvis, who, of course... Oh, you've handed over to Libby Purvis? But um, we've had rather a sort of um, a different year this year. Um, but I'm still a member. In fact, they've made me a life member. Um, and it's a wonderful society. The Arthur Ransom Society is the second biggest literary society. You can guess which is the biggest. I'm not um, sure I can. Tell us. <laughs> well, actually, it's Tolkien. Um, yeah, Lord of the Rings followers, they just pip us to the post, but we've got oh, a lot of members, a lot of family members, and um, it's a wonderful society because you can live the books, you can go and find the locations, and um, uh, they produce three magazine publications a year, and this year we are celebrating the Big Six, which of course is set in Norfolk. Uh, this is um, extraordinary. So, Sophie, tell us about your connection. So you're not just involved with the Arthur Ransom Society. You have a, a really interesting story of how you've become involved. So people might recognise your face. Can you explain how you, how you became involved? They don't recognise me now. But when I was a little girl, I was fortunate enough to play Titty in the original film of Swallows and Amazons. And I was able to live the book um, in that far distant summer, it, the, the 1st of December is going to be the 90th anniversary of um, Swallows and Amazons. And this is the little puffin edition that I took to the Lake District with me in 1973 when we made the film, which came out in 1974. So we're about halfway between the book being written in 1929, published in 1930. This film was made in 19, here we go, here's a picture of it, um, 1974. And then I was involved um, um, slightly in the, re in the remake, if you like, in the, um, the, the 2016 version of the film that, that's come out. And um, so that was fun. So it's been part of my life, but what happened was in 2011, the boat swallow came up for auction can you see her there yeah. and we, we had to buy her so we bought swallow and had her renovated and we brought her up to the old and um she's been in east anglia quite a bit she's actually in kendall now in the lake district but you can join the organization called sail ransom and you can sail swallow swallow from no. she wasn't arthur ransom swallow but swallow from this movie and I come up to the Orwell quite a bit because the Nancy Blackett Trust bought the Nancy Blackett, known in the Ransom's book we didn't mean to go to see as the Goblin. And she was a little yacht that he bought with his royalties from writing Swallows and Amazons. And you can now sail her. And I was fortunate enough to sail her through the Netherlands. We, we, wow. they, they sail her every other year, sort of. They sail her um, uh, over to Holland, like the book, we didn't need to go to sea. And she was also sailed every other year down to the Solent. So she comes to see me, which is really good fun. So they're the kind of books that you can, you can live through. And um, I didn't think that Swallows and Amazons had had an enormous influence on my life until I started writing other books. Um, oh, I've got some here. And then I realised that I had been living the book. I wrote this book called Ride the Wings of Morning, which is not about sailing at all, but it is about camping in Southern Africa. And when I was about 30, I, um, <laughs> I, I ran away from my career in television and I emigrated to Southern Africa and I lived a complete Swallows and Amazons life, cooking on fires and camping 
um, at one stage I drove down from London to Johannesburg and spent six months in, in a tent. Um, and I think if I hadn't had Arthur Ransom's encouragement and the example set before me, I don't know if I would have coped so well. That's <laughs> amazing. That's that's really extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, and I draw on these experiences all the time when I'm writing. Um, this book, where is it? The, the new edition is looks like this. I was asked to write this book by the readers, by people reading my blog, and they commissioned me, the public, Arthur Ransom enthusiasts commissioned me to write about making the original film of Solace and Amazons. And uh, my mother had got me to keep diaries at the time. I should have brought them up. They're downstairs um, in the cupboard. But I, I had the diaries and I thought they were terribly dull. When I reread them, I, <laughs> it occurred to me that when we were making this film, something went wrong almost every day. And they're hilarious. And I had, I had a lot of memorabilia stuffed in the scrapbook. So the diary, this book is based on my diary, but then of course, I've now got the advantage of being able to look back on what we did. And moreover, in 10 years after making this feature film, I got the chance to work in Norfolk on the BBC adaptation of Coop Club and the Big Six. And that was tremendous. And of course I was an adult by then. And so I had that added perspective. So I've actually worked on three of the Arthur Ransom um, book adaptations and appeared on various documentaries, um, things like Country Pile and the books that made Britain. And, um, and they are the life of Arthur Ransom, which is constantly on um, BBC iPlayer, absolutely excellent dark drama directory. Sorry, an excellent drama documentary presented by... Um, Griffith Jones, who lives in Suffolk, and um, that is on BBC iPlayer, and you can find out about Arthur Ransom's life. He went to Russia, really to escape his first wife, who was a bit of a tyrant, but he was interested in fairy stories, and he wrote um, Old Peter's Russian Tales as a result of that. But more importantly, perhaps, he was um, given a job as a foreign correspondent by the Daily News, um, and what was then the Manchester Guardian, became the Manchester Guardian, the Guardian. And he reported back on the Russian Revolution and not only played chess with Lenin, but ended up escaping from Russia with Trotsky's secretary, who became his second wife. <laughs> so this, a James Bond adventure um, is worth finding out about. And there've been a number of books written about it um, as well as a novel, um, I've got this one, Marcus Sedgwick's novel is based on Arthur Ransom's um, escapades. It's called Blood Red, Snow White. Um, and there are a number of Arthur Ransom biographies. There's one here that's in print. Fascinating. Um, the Last Englishman, um, which talks about the double life of Arthur Ransom because he was on MI6's books as, uh, I don't think a double agent, but um, a spy in that he, like many journalists, would send information back to the, um, the British Secret Service. So really exciting. Um, uh, but he had terrible stomach complaints, terrible, um, I think, stomach ulcers. And he really needed to settle down in the Lake District and. Um, he wrote about fishing, but he started writing Swallows and Amazons really because he couldn't do anything else. And the newspaper wanted to send him to um, on foreign assignments, which were very well paid, but he didn't want to leave his Russian wife in Cumbria alone. She was quite frightened of people coming to get her. Um, and uh, he, he physically couldn't do it any longer. So as a result, we have these series of 12 Swallows and Amazons books. Um, which aren't just for children, they've been offering adults great solace, uh, especially during lockdown. And I've taken part in lots of marathon reads of the books. Well, I've done two, three, three, <laughs> one during lockdown. And um, it's, 
it's really broadened my life and uh, they're wonderful books to introduce obviously to eight-year-olds um, because they encourage you to get out there and live and they're not complete fantasy okay it stretches the realm some of them are missy lee um they end up in china in the chinese seas meeting chinese pirates um but a lot of them you can actually go to the locations and if you get the chance to explore the Norfolk Broads in a boat or on foot, um, you can use Coo Club as a kind of guidebook. And when I wrote this book, um, I see this one again, I've got a section at the back um, that you can use as a guide to explore the Lake District and find some of the locations we used in the film and the actual locations that um, inspired Arthur Ransom. And you can stay at them. And I've got some maps here. Um, the maps are very popular. Actually, my merchandise that accompanies the book probably sells better than the book. Because <laughs> everyone wants a cup with this fat of Coniston water on it. But that's where we spent the summer of 1973. Um, so I got to know it quite well. Um, and it was really exciting putting, finding out where the locations were because uh, they're not... He, Arthur Ransom made up the the lake in the north. Um, so some of it's on Windermere, some of the locations you can find on Windermere. And I've just been back to the Windermere Steamboat Museum, which is here. Um, and they've got um, one of Arthur Ransom's dinghies and they've got the his typewriter and the original draft of Swallows and Amazons, which was really amazing to see um, and they are going to be doing a, um, a live in conversation with me on the 1st of December um, online um, you can buy tickets um, on the 1st of December to commemorate the 90th anniversary of the publication of Swallows and Amazons so that's, that's extraordinary. Yeah. I, I so I don't know what else we'll, we can do at the moment um, to celebrate right, Swallows and Amazons coming out. Mm. But um, it was an important book um, and very formative. And I, I worked on a number of other book adaptations. I worked on the first BBC dramatisation of My Family and Other Animals. I don't know if you stock that, but um, here's the hardback. <laughs> Um, I worked we, on... we, we often have that. It's just a question of whether we have it right now because we get it and it sells. So <laughs> I may have just bought that copy actually because we just actually this is this is really interesting, Sophie. So my yeah. my eldest hmm. got me back into Swallows and Amazons again, and hmm. for a while, your the 1974 version of the film was the only thing he would watch <laughs> from the age of about three or four. It was yeah. the only thing he would watch. And, you know, he was out in the garden pretending to be you or Roger. And he went, in fact, there was a World Book Day, which we celebrate every year, where you no know, children dress up in costume. And he went as Roger. And so he had a little tank top and a fishing rod and he had a shark. And people kept saying to him, oh, are you Huckleberry Finn? And he got very put out. He goes, no, I'm Roger. Obviously, I'm Roger. So it's interesting that... that um, that you hold up the My Family and Other Animals because that's what we're about to move on to. And there's, yeah. a, there's a certain similarity, isn't there? That sort of just joy of being outside and doing these simple things. Yeah. Um, well, this book, this particular hardback um, was given to me by Gerald Durrell because we were making the, I was researching the, for the television series and we wanted to get the detail right. And I got him to dig out the old family photographs and they've been used to illustrate the book. Uh, and they were wonderful. And they actually cost us a lot of money because he didn't want to send us the originals. Um, but yeah, I've got a lovely copy signed by Gerald Durrell, um, who came out to Corfu for three weeks and um, was on set with us. So that was quite special. Um, what other book adaptations did I work on? I worked on The Diary of Anne Frank. Um, and but then I got sidelined and worked on Doctor Who and EastEnders. So I had a career in television um, and ended up making or setting up natural history documentaries in Southern Africa. Uh, but I'm now, I've been full time as a writer since 2000, more or less. Um, and 
it's been quite a different experience, but really wonderful. And I've got to go to a lot of bookshops, which is great. <laughs> um, one of the books about Arthur Ransom, there's a number of books written about him. I wrote the foreword for this book, which is an academic study of uh, the whole series of books. So that's quite good um, for grown-ups. Um, makes quite a nice present and that's in print. And what else have we got here? Oh, look what I did. I set up the cover photograph for the puffin version of Coot Club and Big Six. So that's an abridged version of both of them, but you probably stock them separately as a, as a set, which is better. Um, you want all the details so you don't get lost on the broads. Um, <laughs> um, but I thought I thought that your the books you suggested on 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 how to go camping and camp well were really great, mm -hmm. and I keep a blog and I I this summer I wrote a, a blog post about how to cook on a campfire. Oh my goodness, this has become a dissertation. <laughs> how, where to where to where to um cite your campfire, and um you know mustn't. Do, mustn't lay a fire under the trees because you'll damage the tree roots and you have to be careful not to light a fire anywhere where it'll spread um, and then how to go about cooking on a fire and, and all the Arthur Ransom Society members um, chipped in with their advice um, but you can start by becoming a member of the Arthur Ransom group on Facebook um, and you can look at my blog posts um, my blog is called sophieneville.net and there is a lot of information there so you'll find it one way or another um but read the books and get involved and um and get out there so these and are books with action they and unusually we're going to ask our viewers and readers to go straight to you yeah. if they want your book um, the making yep. of swallows and Amazons. Um, so that's on your website. So just to be clear, is that sophieneville.net? Yes. Yeah. S O P H I E. I'm I'm a P H. <laughs> some people say Sophia with an F, but um, Sophie Neville. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I mean, it's okay. a really lovely book to read. I mean, for I mean, people should read the books, and I think there are, as you say, Sophie. I mean, they're wonderful to read as an adult, but I think there's something just perennially enchanting about the story. And actually, I do have a quote here from Marcus Sedgwick, and you held up one of his books yeah. earlier about ransom, and he said, "My childhood would simply not have been the same without this book. It created a whole world to explore, one that lasted long in the imagination after the final page has been read." And I think that's exactly what it gave me what it gave my dad what it's given my my seven-year-old and I just think that's extraordinarily rare to have a book that's lasted 90 years and I still my mind still explodes a little bit about that and yet it, it's still so enticing to children of all ages oh and my father who was born in 1929 he was one of the little boys who would look forward to receiving a first edition of the new Arthur Ransom at Christmas Oh, it's like the Harry Potter of its day. Yes, very much so. And um, I, I wrote, so here's, this is one of the books. This is my hardback. This is the hardback that I had when we were filming and that's signed by Virginia McKenna. Oh. All the people who were in the film. They, oh gosh, they, look. So I've got that precious copy. But the set, I mean, the set makes a christening present. The set makes the most fabulous present for any child, girls or boys. And when I, I brought out this book, um, if I can open it a bit, it's full of photographs and illustrations and colour plates, which makes it a bit expensive, but it's, it's 15 pounds because it's got all these photographs in it. But it was really designed as a present. Um, mm. And what I end up doing is, is getting a DVD, which you can buy cheaply online, of the film. And that's a present, the, yes. the film and then how it was made. And that's really good for anyone, particularly anyone interested in media studies or mm. anyone who dreams of becoming a film actress, <laughs> because not much of it has changed. The cameras have changed and the technology has changed, but the way the film is made and 
what it's like to become a film actress, that hasn't changed. And it, it, if, so, if it's someone's dream, I mean, it was extraordinary what happened. I was an ordinary school girl. Suddenly I'm in this major film. And that was one thing, living out the pages of the books in the Lake District. And then another thing, all the publicity and fuss that goes with it. And then what, you know, you're going to be in another film or not? Are you going to become an actress or not? Um, so it, it's, it's more than just about Swallows and Amazons. But um, I was hoping it would actually sell as a, a media studies textbook in time or as an introduction to a drama course, um, sort of holiday reading before you get to college sort of number. Um, but that's a sort of one Christmas present. And I mean, a Christmas present for someone living in East Anglia would be Coot Club and the Big Six, because that's a nice couple of books um, that then you can go out and explore and find the locations. And they're very accurate. Um, and they have maps in the front. So that's really fun. And if you buy the DVD, go for the one with the green edge. And I don't have a copy here, but there is a DVD on sale and you want the 30th anniversary one. I did the DVD extras for it. Um, so there is a DVD and it's called Swallows and Amazons Forever, which is a bit complicated. It's because I was working for this wonderful producer at the BBC who wanted to um, film drama adaptations of all the Arthur Ransom books. So it's Swallows and Amazons Forever, Coot Club and the Big Six. Quite a long title for a DVD, but it's very good. And it's, ooh, eight episodes, eight half-hour episodes. It's quite good for babysitting. <laughs> um, and um, it doesn't feature the Swallows and Amazons at all, of course. It features the Coots. And, um, and Henry Dimbleby is in lead. And Julian Fellows is the baddie. So quite big stars, really. You know, quite fun. Can you summarise the, the, the plots of these films? So tell us, for people who haven't had the pleasure of reading Swallows and Amazons, can you give us a potted, a potted plot? Swallows and Amazons is the dream of a little family of children who they go up to the Lake District and they see an island and they just long to go and camp on the island by themselves. Mm. And a sailing dinghy enables you to move quite fast with all your clobber, your camping gear and get to an island and camp. And that's a dream that I think every child has to be um, surviving on a desert island. <laughs> and what happens is they meet local children and there's a bit of friction to begin with, but they make very, very good friends. And the other books in the series, um, there's another far four set in the Lake District um, and beyond where that friendship is um, tried and tested and explored. And it's about the, the talents of each child being used to the full. Mm -hmm. So Susan's very practical and she organizes everything and makes sure everyone's got enough to eat and are wearing the right clothes. And, um, and John is very, he has very good leadership talents. Roger, the boy Roger provides the, 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 the jokes. But Titty, she is the imaginative one. And you think, oh, ideas and dreaminess and imagination, what good, what use is that going to be to anyone? But actually she ends up having the ideas and gains the courage to, to win the day. So her she is idea. my hero. She is just my hero. I wanted to be her when I was a kid, and I want to be her now. She was yes. just, she was just effervescent and amazing. And um, yeah. she keeps a logbook. She keeps she does a keep a logbook. Yeah. So well, she's a writer as well, just like you. Yeah. And, so keep a diary like Titty. Yeah. Um, and she writes letters. Um, and actually, from my books, where are they? This my first book I published. Funnily enough. It is a lockdown diary, a lockdown diary kept in 1991. I kept the diary and then I felt urged to type it up and I drawn illustrations, it's illustrated. So it's a diary with maps and illustrations. And at one point I went up with my father to the Lake District. And so it's got a little bit of Swallows and Amazons in it. And 
you can buy this as a hardback, you can buy this as a paperback, or you can just get the Kindle version. And the good thing about the Kindle version is that the um, illustrations are in colour and you can load it on your phone and it's cheap. But that's quite a nice present. So that's a diary, an edited diary, but a diary. And then this one, when I lived in Southern Africa, I was too busy working on safaris. We did horse safaris. Um, to keep a diary, it was just exhausting at the end of the day, but I was determined to keep writing to my family. And this book was made up out of the letters I sent home and the letters my sisters mainly sent to me. And one of them was a military wife and one of them was married to um, a corn trader. So she was leading a very rural farming life. And there's something quite fun about a travelogue that compares being in a very exotic location like the Okamango Delta on a horse, camping um, with all the challenges um, therein um, and, and contrasting that with washing machine breakdowns and ordinary domestic life in, in England. So that's quite a fun present as well. And I think books, I think the future for books and bookshops is probably because books make the best presents. You can't accuse them of being clutter. Well, not until you've got a lot. Um, and you can always read them and give them away. And books take people into a different place, into a different world. They broaden your horizons. You can't read too many. So I think this Christmas is going to be the Christmas when people give each other books. Um, but you can also give each other our membership of the Arthur Ransom Society. Um, and people are giving um, their loved ones um, a donation to charity. And one charity I'm supporting is School Readers. I don't know if you've heard of it yet because it hasn't been around that long, but it's a wonderful charity um, that encourages literacy and the donations um, make it possible to match volunteers with the right school and the volunteers go into schools or at the moment they're doing it online and they listen to children read and they introduce children to storybooks and this is just fundamental it's just core and it's a wonderful community thing to get involved in um, so if you live in a village or a small town, you could contact school readers and say, look, I live in Wyndham and I'd like to just go to nearest school. It's got to be really easy for me, um, fit in with my day. I don't want to travel too far. So they find the right school near you that would work for you and the age group that you want to work with and the, the teachers you want to work with. And friends of mine who become readers and have done it for some time say it's lovely because you end up knowing all the young people as they they mature. Say if you've let if you've 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 read with all the eight-year-olds in that age group in your town, and then you get to know all those young people as they get older. And she said it's just been the most wonderful life enriching thing to be a volunteer school reader. Um, and it's quite easy to fit into your day. Um, so that's a lovely thing that people can do, and you can perhaps suggest that um, the children read the scholars and Amazon's books <laughs> or go on to that. Um, but that's a lovely thing to do. And so I've been supporting that. And with the merchandise that I sell, um, my scholars and Amazon's maps, which you can, there's a link on my website to them, to t-shirts and um, mugs and greetings cards and things like that. And then I send the money that I I get a little bit of money, about a pound for each item, and that all adds up, and then I send that to school readers. Um, and we are, um, it's expanding um, rapidly all over the country. And I think it'll be as big as, bigger than Meals on Wheels, Meals on Wheels in the end. Um, but literacy is so important. And if people don't learn to read, oh, it's shocking. I was a slow reader. I, I just couldn't crack the code. I didn't manage to read a book properly until I was nine. But then uh, you couldn't stop me. And um, one question I'm often asked is, had I read the Arthur Ransom books before I got the part of Titty? Yes, I had. And here's my little book, the first one. And it's actually marked up. I went through it before I made the film and it's marked up with all the things I thought I might have to do, like dance the hornpipe. And <laughs> 
I marked up all Titty's dialogue. And when we got on the film set, which of course was the banks of Connors and Water, um, the director told us, no, we weren't going to see the script. But we didn't need to because the script was lifted directly from the books. And that was the strength, I think, of the film. Um, David Wood, the, uh, the screenwriter who's still going strong, um, he had to shorten it, but he did this. He edited it down with Mrs. Ransom, who was still alive at the time, and she was quite demanding um, and quite a stickler. And actually, if you read the scenes that they put into the, the screenplay and never actually shot, I'm glad they didn't, they wouldn't have worked. They kind of over, over dramatized it. Um, so the, the great thing about the 1974 film was that it was a very faithful book adaptation. And we were forced, they were forced to be faithful because Mrs. Ransom was only giving them the rights on that condition. She wasn't having a, what she called a disnification of her husband's work. And she actually nearly stopped the filming because one of the actors had black hair, the boy Roger had black hair. She didn't want a child with black hair, appearing <laughs> as a swallow. Um, but actually when she saw him, she relented, but she nearly stopped the film. And my father nearly stopped the film because <laughs> In one of the scenes, the swallows are meant to nearly hit the, um, um, they call it the native shipping on the lake, one of the tourist boats that still go up and down Lake Windermere, or Windermotive. Anyway, we nearly did hit it, and we nearly did sink. My father was on board the, the, the steamer, and he was so shocked that he said the safety just wasn't good enough, and he nearly stopped the film. Anyway, <laughs> you can read more about what went wrong in my book, but... Um, Lots we're glad we're <laughs> glad it didn't stop the filming because it's it's you know all of these things are bringing these wonderful books to new generations of yes it has it has yeah which is wonderful yeah. thank you so much for joining us sophie it's been That's lovely cool. to meet you and hear all about these things and any arthur ransom fans are going to have a lovely pick of books to choose from because you know he's a fascinating character so um mm. we're putting a link in our um, underneath the video um, on our YouTube channel to your website so people can go and explore the offerings that you've got there. Um, and if anybody um, is watching and would like a copy of one of the actual Arthur Ransom novels, we'd obviously recommend that you start with Swallows and Amazons because it's seminal and beautiful um, and wonderful. Uh, mine still has water stains from when I read it in a boat. Um, also, I don't have um, The Big Six with me, but also Coot Club and The Big Six are the two, as Sophie mentions, which are set on the broads. And anybody in East Anglia will recognise all of those locations. Um, and we can get those for you in the shop. Um, I, just got, I just got two to flash oh, at the yes. screen before we say goodbye. This is a fantastic gifty book, just new out from Francis Sinkin Publishers, The Lost Book of Adventure. And it, it is quite gifty, it's 20 pounds, but you get so much value for money. And listen to this, this is how it starts, warning. This book contains a number of, this isn't a joke, this number contains a number of dangerous activities which should be done under the supervision of an adult. The publisher expressly disclaims liability for any injury or damage, et cetera. But um, it is about, um, shelters, dens, tree houses, rafts, um, first aid kits, nights among the nomads, sailings, adventures, expeditions, shipwrecks, um, covert camps, knives, fires. So definitely one to have a more enriched childhood. Um, <laughs> and the, um, the stick book as well, which starts with the stick, totally natural, all purpose and free. Um, so <laughs> This is lots of ideas of how you can amuse yourself or others with bushcraft busking, um, with um, how to measure the earth um, with stick and the line and a shadow. So um, they, these are also options if you've read the Arthur Ransoms that we've been talking about earlier today. Um, can I just say that I've also got a YouTube channel. And I don't know if you can link this interview to it. Um, it's called Sophie Neville. But I have got on it um, incredible cine footage that my parents took behind the scenes when the film, the 1974 film, as well as Amazons was being made. So that's quite fun. And there are a few other clips that might be of interest to people. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. 
Thank you. And we yeah. hope that the we hope that the um, Q and A goes well also on the first of December. So we'll keep an eye. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll share the, the link for that over our, our when we are doing our tweeterings around the place. And if anybody would like to join you, we encourage people to do that as well. Right. Okay. Well, excellent. Thank you again, Sophie. It's been lovely talking to you. Bye. Bye.